Hello, my name is Ronald Mars III. And my name is Anthony Tell. Our project is on the attack that will never be forgotten. Pearl Harbor is the U.S. naval base on the island of Oahu, Hawaii, which is west of Honolulu. The attack of Pearl Harbor was a surprise attack conducted by the Japanese Navy against the U.S. naval base of Pearl Harbor. This attack took place on December 7th, 1941. The Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor at 7.48 a.m. in Hawaiian time. This was on an ordinary Sunday morning. The Japanese decided to attack on this specific day in time because Sunday is the day that many people go to church or relax. The soldiers were not at their post and they didn't do any drills that day, so the Americans were vulnerable to the attack. The Japanese had two goals, to destroy the American aircraft carriers and to sink as many capital ships as possible especially battleships. The core planning for the attack was conducted by commanders Mitsuo Fuchida and Minoru Genda, both of whom belonged to Japan's elite of bright young naval aviators. The officer of the deck sees something suspicious about 50 yards ahead of the port bow. He isn't sure what the objects are, so he asks a sailor, and the sailor says that it is a periscope. As the Japanese get closer and closer to Pearl Harbor, the Americans have no clue about the attack. The reason why the Japanese decided to attack Pearl Harbor in the first place was because Japan was trying to take over all of China. They knew it was going to be nearly impossible, so they coincided with Nazi Germany to do so. Since Germany at the time was the enemy of America, America stopped exporting goods such as oil to Japan as a punishment. The Japanese were angered at the Americans for doing this, so they sent out planes with artillery and attacked Pearl Harbor and caused immense damage to many people, planes, ships, submarines, and many other U.S. property. The Japanese expected the Americans to be at home relaxing or at church praying, so this was a perfect time for them to strike. As the Japanese speed through, the Americans notice the planes flying above their heads, but they ignore it because they think that it is a practice run for the new coming pilots. The six Japanese aircraft carriers, two battleships, three submarines, and support force of 20 ships had traveled 5,000 kilometers for over 12 days without being detected as predators. The Japanese departed on November 22nd and took their route to Hawaii. They immediately dropped bombs as they flew over Pearl Harbor. This startled the Americans since they had no idea about the attack. As the Americans tried to get away and find a safe place to go, the Japanese continued to drop their explosives and destroy everything. The Americans realize that they are being attacked, but they do not know what or who are attacking them, so they constantly look up to figure out what's going on. The Japanese do not give mercy to the Americans. They constantly drop explosives to destroy everything in sight. Piles of smoke from the explosives are blinding anyone that's trying to get out of the situation and find safety. The Americans quickly try to get any resources that they can to fight back. The Japanese did everything that they had to do to get what they wanted. They destroyed everything in sight and made sure that peace wasn't an option. Richmond K. Turner, the U.S. Navy Admiral, warned that the Navy should be put on high alert status and security should be increased to Pearl Harbor in case of incoming attacks but his request was only partially fulfilled. The Japanese pilots were disappointed to find out that no American aircraft carriers were in Pearl Harbor. But as they dropped torpedoes, they destroyed capital ships that were at anchor and on nearby army and air bases. The Japanese relentlessly dropped torpedoes which injured many people and damaged U.S. property. Torpedoes are cylindrical shaped projectiles that are used to detonate on contact. They are launched from submarines, aircrafts, or ships. Here is some intense footage on the attack on Pearl Harbor. Yamamoto Isoroku was the Japanese admiral who planned the surprise attack at Pearl Harbor. He was basically the mastermind behind all of it. Hirohito was the Japanese emperor who gave permission to Yamamoto to attack Pearl Harbor. He too had hatred for the Americans for stopping the oil exports along with other supplies. Dory Miller was the first African American to receive a medal for shooting down Japanese aircraft without experience on the weapon he used, which was a mounted machine gun. Since Dory was colored and there was racism going on in America at that time, he was assigned to kitchen duty and had to prepare the other soldiers' meals. He wasn't trained to be a soldier, so this was an amazing achievement in history. 
Lieutenant Welsh and Lieutenant Taylor flew against the Japanese planes, taking six or seven out of the battle. The Japanese attack was separated into two waves. The first wave was much more subtle and less damaging. However, the second wave was much more destructive and devastating. The Americans attempted to fight back, but it was no use since the Japanese were well prepared for the attack. The Japanese pilots said Tora, Tora, Tora right before they were going to attack because the word Tora means tiger in Japanese. This was a code word for attack. As a result of the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese ended up winning the battle and killed over 2,000 soldiers, 68 civilians, and wounded about 1,000 soldiers and about 35 civilians. The Japanese also sunk four battleships, three destroyers, and destroyed over 150 planes. Nine submariners got killed and 55 airmen were killed. This was such an important event because it sparked the beginning of World War II when America declared war on Japan a few days later. This changed the world forever. This was a turning point in history because America was previously aloof in World War II, but after the attack of Pearl Harbor, they felt threatened and frightened, so they decided to take part in the war. Before the attack, nothing important was really happening in America. It was just a peaceful country, and there were no wars in which they were associated with. After the event, Franklin D. Roosevelt presented a speech to Congress regarding the event and requested a declaration of war. Here is a small portion of Roosevelt's speech. As Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, I have directed that all measures be taken for our defense, but always will our whole nation remember the character of the onslaught against us. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. One long-term change of this event was that America now knew that they could be attacked from anywhere, so they heightened their border security immensely, making invasions in America nearly impossible. This also happened immediately after the attack because America wanted to make sure something like this would never happen again. Another long-term effect was the invention of the CIA, which is short for Central Intelligence Agency. This branch of the military was founded because there was a lack of military branches during this time. The CIA focused on military intelligence, providing useful information for other branches of the military. This is important today along with protecting the nation's borders because it guarantees protection of our nation. Before the attack, Americans swore not to get involved in World War II. But after the attack, they felt threatened and scared, so they decided to take part. The Americans believed that they couldn't be attacked, but once the attack occurred, it made them realize that they can be attacked from anywhere, so they increased security and protection immensely. <laughs>